In my previous video about how I designed my interfaces, I explained how to draw rectangles with rounded corners. And if I chose to start there, it was no coincidence. Indeed, these shapes form the basis of almost all the visual elements in my graphical interfaces. For a long time, I hesitated about making a follow-up video and wondered what form it should take. The reason is that I use a tool I developed myself to create my projects, and it is far from finished. In fact, it will probably never be. Showing code wouldn't be very useful, since it changes constantly. So I decided instead to present my creative process by walking through a concrete application example. I frequently end my days with the unpleasant impression that I haven't done anything useful and I struggle to figure out where my time actually went. What I need is a way to determine how accurate this assumption really is, while also helping me improve my time management. That's why I've decided to create a custom time tracker tailored to my needs. The priority is a seamless, intuitive user experience that minimizes friction as much as possible. I have a two-part layout in mind. A timeline at the top to visualize the day's events and a keypad at the bottom to log current activities. Building your own tools brings a satisfaction that only those who have experienced it can truly understand. Programming is one of the most powerful ways to do this. And thanks to this video's sponsor, Boot.dev, it's within everyone's reach. It offers a huge catalog of courses to master all the modern technologies you need to build your own apps or services. With its RPG-based leveling system, Boot.dev helps you stay committed and consistent in your learning by making the experience addictive and fun. Earn XP, complete quests and defeat bosses, all while acquiring new skills for your personal projects or your career. The lessons are extensive and detailed featuring interactive activities at every step to keep you engaged. There's no risk in trying it, as they offer a no-questions-asked refund policy for the first 30 days. Besides, all the courses are accessible for free, with the interactive activities unlocked via paid access. Thanks again to Boot.dev for sponsoring this video. Be sure to use the QR code on the screen or the link in the description to get 25% of the annual subscription while supporting the channel. Now let's go back to our application. Now that the concept is set, let's look at how to actually build the app. I'll start by laying out the different elements using those famous rectangles from last time. It's not very workable as is, so I'm going to add some spacing between the items. To keep the interface uniform and consistent, all constants are centralized. This ensures the spacing is identical everywhere. The same applies to the corner radii, for example. The layout is better arranged now, but it still lacks depth. A very simple way to fix this is to add drop shadows to the rectangles. To enhance the effect, we can slightly offset the shadows downwards. Next, I'll give each button a color to differentiate them easily and make the overall design less dull. I'm intentionally leaving the first button grey because it corresponds to neutral activity, such as nighttime or breaks. Now that the structure is in place, let's move on to the interactions. We can add a slight zoom effect to the buttons on hover. This effect is great for highlighting the targeted element. However, it's a bit abrupt as is, so I'm going to animate the transition to make it smoother. To achieve this, I use an automatically interpolated variable, following the method I demonstrated in a previous video. This makes animating this kind of interaction incredibly simple. I just need to assign a slightly higher value to the scale variable when the mouse enters the button, and revert to the original value when it leaves. To enhance the illusion of depth, I'm going to slightly increase the distance between the shadow and the button as it lifts up. It's a subtle effect, but I find the difference surprisingly noticeable. Now, let's make the timeline display useful information. I'll add a container to the top bar to draw the timeline. 
When nesting one element inside another, I always try to keep their edges parallel. Let's take an example to illustrate the process. We'll nest this rectangle inside a larger one. If we simply scale it down and center it, the visual result looks a bit odd. We immediately spot an unevenness in the gap, which gives the whole thing a distorted look. Currently, both rectangles have equal corner radii. To fix the problem, we simply subtract the spacing value from the inner rectangle's radius. The gap then evens out naturally, and the edges become parallel. This is exactly what I'm doing with the inside of the bar. For this demonstration, it fills up very quickly, but normally it represents a full 24 hours. Clicking a button changes the current activity, which is reflected on the timeline. However, it isn't very clear which button is currently active. I'm going to add a bit of emphasis to the selection. Here, I'm simply adding a border around the selected activity. To animate the selection, I'm using an automatically interpolated variable again. In addition to the border, I'll also display a label below the activity. I find it brings the whole thing to life. Along with the label, why not add a small light indicator? It makes the design look a bit more polished than just plain text. Most of my project ideas come from simply playing around with them. For instance, I find that the timeline isn't very practical for gauging the proportion of the day taken up by each task. So, I decided to add a second bar that shows the breakdown of the day's activities, excluding the neutral one. It's essentially an aggregation of the timeline. Next, I added simple labels to the timelines. I'm not entirely sure about the utility or aesthetics of this addition, but as always, I'll adjust based on usage. To better define the button area, I decided to place them in a container. I tend to like clearly segmented interfaces. As with the bars, I ensure consistent spacing all around. Now that the overall structure is in place, I'm going to add more information directly inside the activity buttons. First, a title to make identification easier. At the bottom of each activity, I'm also adding the proportion of the day it represents. To ensure the layout looks natural and balanced, I place the elements at the top and bottom with equal spacing. For the text, I like using the same color everywhere, but with a slight transparency. This makes it very easy to tint the elements consistently. In the center, I add the time spent on each activity. With the other two text elements, I find the overall look quite balanced and consistent. As it stands, the timelines provide a good overview, but I feel they lack detail. So, I'm adding a tooltip on hover for the different time slots. I think the smoked glass effect looks great and adds an elegant touch. However, the tooltip's spawn is a bit abrupt. As always, a little automatic interpolation fixes the issue. The appearance and disappearance are now animated, which I find much more pleasant. However, I'm using a fast animation to maintain a general sense of responsiveness. While working on the tooltip, I noticed the background wasn't distinct enough from the time slots. To increase the contrast, I'm adding a subtle hatched effect that clearly separates the empty space from the rest. I'm quite pleased with the result, but on second thought, I preferred the minimalist feel of the interface without the labels. So, I'm removing them to revert to the previous aesthetic and I find the clean look much more pleasant. Speaking of changes, I also feel that the style of the active label doesn't quite fit with the rest of the design anymore.
To unify the look, I've replaced the text and the little light with a sort of pill in the same color as the activity. I want to reiterate that I am by no means a professional designer. Everything I do is based on intuition. As a result, I don't have a magic formula that works every time for creating beautiful interfaces. I work through trial and error, trying to gradually inch closer to the desired result. I hope this video clearly illustrates this iterative process, which is inherent to all my other projects. Just like with the daily overview, I am adding a tooltip to provide details on the activity distribution. I use the exact same technique to animate it. Purely for aesthetics, I am adding a touch of color that echoes the activities. For the current activity in the daily overview, I now display the information in real time, which wasn't the case before. As for the non-visual aspects, the tracker automatically saves the day's data. This means you can close and reopen it without disrupting the tracking. The application also automatically handles the transition to a new day, even if it is currently running at that moment. It's possible to configure the selectable activities and their colors via a configuration file. It is very rudimentary for now, but I could always improve it later. And there you have it. The interface is now functional. As planned, it is very simple to use and doesn't offer any advanced features. The goal is simply to let me track where I spend my time with reasonable accuracy. The main drawback of this approach is that I have to remember to reflect real-life activity changes in the interface. But as it happens, keeping that in mind also helps prevent me from flitting between tasks. If you're interested, the executable and source code are available on my Patreon. A huge thank you to everyone supporting me there.